So let's come back and see the third category of your ligands. It is on the basis of bonding present between donor atoms and metal atom, metal ion. Okay, what did I give? Let me explain. So basically, the third category of ligands are called chelating ligands, and it can also be one more category is ambidentate ligand. They've been they were asked in one of the uh, yeah this year what is ambidentate ligand? We'll state with an example, ambi dentate ligand let's see now when i have to come back to chelating ion ligand the first important thing which is very useful for your uh, exam is just remember more number of chelate it forms more stable is a complex I remember that right first important thing i'm writing <coughs> more number of chelating complexes Okay, more is the stability or higher is the stability. Okay, let us write higher is the stability. Higher is the stability. Okay, done. This is what I have written. Now let's come back and see an example. So, first of all, how does it increase the stability? Basically, whenever chelates are formed, you know, this whole system entropy. Entropy only that th thing only explains the stability, isn't it? So the entropy is it's, it'll start increasing. So when it is increasing, automatically it, it favors the system, means it, it'll get the system to a stable state. So that's the main concept. So I think you've studied this in the thermodynamics chapter also, the concept of entropy. So let's come back and see chelating ligands. So let me take an example. I'll write here higher the stability since entropy increases and favors stability okay that i'm not going to the concept of thermodynamics here i'm basically explaining you the um, chelating cons concept so now you have a metal atom copper i'm going to link with this right a bidentate ligand so ch2 ch2 nh2 nh2 this is going to form a chelate this is going to form a chelate on the other side <coughs> ch2 ethane 1 2 diamine ch2 again your nh2 one more nh2 this is going to link from here this is going to link from here right so is it not forming chelate this whole complex is called chelate complex plus two charge so this is your copper maybe this is not clear i'll write it properly see you so this is trying to form because it's a bidentate ligand it comes and forms a chelate or a ring around the metal atom thus making it attain stability everything tries to form a stability isn't it so i'll write here nh2 not clear i think well, let me make it clear <coughs> cu ch2 ethylene n h2 n h2 okay now right so this is your chelate now i said why does it form chelate what is your use <coughs> because it basically tries to make the com uh, complex stable so what types of chelates like basically form uh, it's going to start with bidentate it can be bi dentate not never write monodentate because not possible isn't it bidentate or polydentate <coughs> complexes form chelating ligands then let's come back and uh, here uh, you can also write chelating or chelating or rings when i have to come back to my ambidentate ligand ambidentate are those which have two atom two the same can attack with the metal atom with two donor sites so we can write like this ligands possessing or attacking attacking metal atom with two with two donor sites that is what we have written right two donor sites that means suppose taking <coughs> one example just see the common example how am i writing n c s the second example here s is going to start here n c n what is the difference you are observing here it's linking from sulfur to the metal atom here it is linking from nitrogen to the metal atom so when it's linking with sulfur to metal atom, sulfur is called thio. 
थायो साइनिक this is if it is linking with uh, the nitrogen atom then i call it as iso thio cyanate yes so this is how you going to uh, see uh, two sides from the same uh, ligand here it's going to form bridges or links this is the third category or third class of classification 